I am so excited for the release of this video because it is a huge update on something that HoneyBook has released that I'm telling you is probably, if not the number one thing that people ask about HoneyBook, it's top five. So HoneyBook recently came out with lead forms. What is a lead form? It can be a bunch of different things, but essentially it's like a public smart file. Now, if you also don't know what a smart file is, a smart file could be whatever you want it to be. It could be a questionnaire, an invoice, a contract, a scheduler, a brochure. And so the number one thing that people have always asked us is, how do I send a public questionnaire link to a client without having to add them to HoneyBook? The answer is lead forms. If you're new around here, my name is Christy. I am a HoneyBook Pro and the CEO of DeSilva Life. My goal is to help you on this channel learn more about HoneyBook and how to implement it in your business, along with going through all the new amazing features. So in this video, I wanna just dive a little bit more into the difference between contact forms and lead forms. I'm gonna go through a tutorial on how to set these up and what the difference is. Before I dive into the tutorial portion, let's just talk about the difference between contact forms versus lead forms. So contact form is exactly what you think. It's going to be gathering the name, email, phone number, et cetera, the information of a client that is a lead that's interested in working with you. It's basically just like a short questionnaire that you can embed on your website, you can send that link directly, and then it'll populate into your HoneyBook account. Where a lead form can do so much more. It can be one page, multi-page, you can put images, schedulers, videos, contract, invoice. There's so many different ways that you can use it, and I'll go through a couple use cases in the tutorials, but that is the main difference between the two. So now let's dive in to what they actually look like and how you can set them. So let's chat lead forms. I'm so excited to show you this new amazing feature. Okay, so first of all, I just want to touch base on the contact form first, then we'll get into lead forms so you could see the difference. Now we have a whole video on our YouTube channel about contact forms, how to embed it on your website. So make sure to check that out if you're interested in how to build a contact form. But if you are in the tools, my template section, you can see it. You can find contact forms from here to find lead forms. It's actually going to be tools, lead forms. You can also do contact forms from there as well. So they're not currently available in this section yet. Um, you have to go into tools, lead forms. So you can see that I have multiple different contact forms here. Our default contact form is what is embedded on our website on the contact page. So you could see here, if I open up my website and come to the contact page, this is what is directly embedded. So it actually looks like a part of our website. So the purpose of the contact form is that people can fill in their information and touch base with us to say, hey, I'm interested in your consulting services. Give us a little bit more information and then they're logged right into our HoneyBook, which is great. Whereas a lead form is different. So one more thing I wanna show you before I move on to lead forms is you could also see that in the contact forms, I have quite a few here, right? I have the ClickUp Roadmap contact form, HoneyBook Pros, ClickUp Consulting, because there are specific times where I can direct a specific type of lead in one direction. On our website, we wanna have one contact form but there are places like the HoneyBook Pros directory or an inbound ClickUp lead where I want to get more tailored questions towards that person and know that they're a HoneyBook lead or a ClickUp lead, for example. Also, there are times with a contact form where I wanted to assign a lead type, like if someone was interested in the ClickUp roadmap, then it would send them the ClickUp roadmap information. So you can be strategic with these, but they're pretty basic. They're a contact form. You can put images and stuff in there, but it's nothing compared to lead forms. So now let's pop into lead forms and let me show you one example of a lead form. 
Okay, so here I have a couple that I have been playing around with. And you can see if I click into consultation call, it has a totally different look to it, right? It really looks like a smart file. Now, if you're not familiar with smart files, again, we have a whole video, a whole series actually, going through smart files, how to set them up, how to customize them. So I really just wanna focus on the functionality of the lead forms rather than the design today. So you'll see you can input different blocks just like you can within a contact form. You can embed videos, questions, services, invoice and pay. And then what's different about this is with smart files, you used to have to have your client added to your HoneyBook account in order to share this with them. Not anymore. Now you can click share and have this as a public link. So if I copy that link, I can now have this in my link in bio, a link on my website, and now this form is available for anyone to see and fill out. So you can see it looks just like a smart file, except it's essentially public. So something that you do have to have on these lead forms is have the full name and email address because you are capturing that lead information, right? Say you didn't bring that in and someone scheduled a consult call, you wouldn't even know who they were. So let's just talk about a couple other use cases for these lead forms. So you can do things like here's a scheduler, right? Maybe you want to add a couple more questions to this. So you add a couple questions here at the bottom. What do you want to accomplish on your strategy session, etc.? Something really awesome with this as well is say I actually didn't want this to be a consultation call, but I want it to be a paid strategy session. Well, then I can actually add an invoice and let's just put this invoice template in there. And then they can schedule their call. I can make sure that they have to schedule the session and then they can pay for the invoice and then the payment here as well. So this public link to a paid strategy session. What about people like photographers? This is where you can create a lead form, say for mini sessions. It has all the information about the mini session, some sample photos from mini sessions. Then it has your scheduler so they can immediately see when you have availability and then they can go to pay for the session. If you want to take it a step further, you can even add a contract in there as well. So this could be on your website. You could put it on your Instagram stories like, hey, currently booking fall mini sessions. Here's the link to book. They could see what's available, get more information, sign and pay all in one go and there's no barrier there before lead forms there were times where you know the client may want more information but they have to fill out a contact form and even if they automatically get that email it's still not the same type of immediate satisfaction that you get with lead forms so that's really the gist of it in terms of like settings and things you could see the different things you could do, like change it, here's the form link, um, send a confirmation email, activate an automation. Um, it's very similar to Smart Files, so if you've already been using Smart Files, it's not going to be a huge learning curve for you. Um, and if you come back here, I'm not going to publish those changes. Another thing that you can do is I always recommend checking out the template gallery. So come into template galleries. Now these aren't specifically lead forms. They are um, just smart files, but you can see how other people are using their smart files and gain some inspiration, even some design inspiration, right? So you can see family photography proposal, so cute. This proposal for creatives, love the look. So I always recommend browsing the template library. And then you can also copy and paste elements from one smart form into a lead form. So you don't feel like you have to, you know, start it all from scratch and ground zero. You can use what you already have and convert these into lead forms just with some copy pasting. So I hope this video was helpful for you and gave you some more insight into what lead forms are, how they're different from contact forms, 
platforms and give you a little bit of inspiration and in how you can use it for your business. So I hope that video is helpful for you in learning the difference between lead forms and contact forms and more into this new amazing feature that HoneyBook has released. If you are brand new to HoneyBook and you want all the nitty gritty details of how to set it up, have our team support, everything you really need to kickstart your HoneyBook, feel free to check out our System School HoneyBook course. I'm going to link the sales page in the description below, so check it out, but it's going to give you the step-by-step -step from start to finish of everything you need to do to set up your HoneyBook account, and you'll have me and my team there to support you the whole way through. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any other HoneyBook tutorials coming down the pipeline. With that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.